this Zoom session will provide a quick overview of the GPAEA 21st Century Classrooms and how staff can schedule and use the classrooms. In both Ottumwa, Burlington and some of our districts, we have 21st Century Classrooms that are integrating three tenets of classroom design. They have furniture that is mobile and flexible, each collaborative area has a digital display, and each collaborative area has a writable surface. In our classrooms, the walls are writable so that we can use an Expo pen to write on the walls. This is a picture from Burlington. You'll notice the collaboration chairs. They work really nice because you can keep personal items under the seat and move them if you regroup. Very similar to the setup in Ottumwa, you'll see the displays for each group and the Mondo pad or touch screen in the back. And in the ceiling, you'll notice there is a projector. The purpose of this is for showing video or things to the large group, but it still does not work very well, especially in Ottumwa, for just doing lecture style. The room is really designed for collaborative work groups. Here's an example of putting the tables together in flexible ways. Uh, the capacity in Burlington is probably about 25 to 30, and in Tumwa, a few more, around 40 in the classroom style, more if you use areas such as the learning lounge. This is the one in Burlington, and here's the learning lounge in Tumwa. This is a green screen area. We can use the green screen with software. This is Jane demonstrating using the green screen to put Trisha and Walt Disney World. It's very similar technology to what they use to show the weather maps, but it's very simple using an iPad and the green screen. There are some unique features. In Otomo, we have something we call the campfire area, which is nice for debriefing and working in a large circle in the center. In Burlington, we have an individual space or booth for small groups or individual work area. Here's an example of students visiting the classroom and a reminder for me to tell you that one of the major purposes of the room is to um, shift instruction away from lecture to more student-centered learning. So we're trying to use this space to model and help teachers learn what it would be like to teach in a 21st century classroom. I did block out the students' names that they would written on the wall and it's a reminder that we need video and photograph release forms especially if the students are under 18. This takes a little planning time because they must be signed by a parent or guardian. Scheduling room is really easy. Uh, you can call in Annie or Christy Staten and send them an email requesting the room in Burlington or Tama. And that's pretty much it for scheduling. We have a calendar, so if it's available, um, it's, it can be scheduled such as any other room. If you've never used the room, we'd really like you to partner with someone on the instructional tech team to help you plan using the space and um, the flexibility you can use for your groups. Once you get in the room, it is a little different. Even turning on the lights is a little different. We have a control panel in the wall. You can also control all the equipment using an iPad. This is the switch in Atomo. We have a separate switch for the lights. Both rooms have this tower for equipment, and inside the tower we have the iPad, and I also put the mic out there so you can see it, particularly in Tumwa. Um, if students are sharing out, it's hard to hear, so using the audio system is very helpful. We have a clip-on mic and also a handheld mic. The iPad is just a regular iPad, but with special software. So you'll notice that button, I think it's RTI panel. When I click on that, it brings up my options. In Tumwa, to start the system, I just click on System Startup, and I have uh, choices to either use the entire room, the north, or the south end. So we have zones set up in Atoma. The lighting can be controlled using the iPad. You'll notice it's by zone and percent. Audio, also by zone. I have high, medium, and low. I can mute different areas. So all can be controlled from the iPad. This is the part of the iPad we probably use the most. It's the video switcher. So, for example, if I want the teacher to have their screen or computer on all the displays in the room, I just click one button, which is video all. If I want to share, like, 
maybe number nine and uh, eight side by side won't have the same things on the screen. I could choose the more button. And here is an example. I pull up monitor nine. And if I want to share with number eight, I just touch eight. If I wanted to share with everyone on side of that room, I touch six, seven, eight, and nine. Notice the icon that looks like a closing door. I need to click that to allow this um, pop-up or this menu to move so I can see the things behind it. So once I've made my choice, I need to shut this screen or window by clicking on that close the door. Uh, this is a reminder that to be able to use the wireless system, each computer device would need to have an app or program installed. We use a program called WIPS or NIROP is a newer version of the same program. So I'm able to show my screen on any of the displays. If you don't have this installed, in a tunnel you can type in that IP number, it'll take you to a screen and walk you through the installation or tell you which software you need. Here's an example of my Murop program. I just clicked on it to open it. If I wanted to collect, connect to the auditorium, I would just choose the auditorium. In a tunnel, if I'm on the staff network, I'll have the pull down so I'll see all the different monitors or displays that are available in the building to me as a staff member. If I'm on the guest network, I'd have to put in the physical IP number that's on each display. You see there at the bottom, there's a spot to type in the IP number. Once I type that in, for example, here I'm going to 21C group 9. I'll get asked for a passcode, and it's just the number of the group. So if I was going to group 2, it'd be 2, 2, 2, 2. And I always forget to show this part. In the upper left-hand corner, there's an arrow that I have to click on to get the play button. So I have to scroll this window of choices up by clicking that up arrow. Then I get this screen, and I can click play. The default is to go to the whole screen, but you'll notice there's four squares. I could go to just one of the four corners of the group display, so I can share this display with others in my group. So I could have, have, I could have up to four devices on one group display. Um, in near off, I can also pause or stop. So if I want to quit sharing, I just click the big square. Here's an example where I have my Chromebook in the lower right. This student group is sharing one display to their group. And if they wanted to share it out to the rest of the classroom, then the teacher or the facilitator would need to go to the iPad and choose to share it out. So I could click that station to video all to share with everyone in the room or to a specific um, station by clicking more. Um, in the lower right-hand corner, there's an off button, and that's how I shut the equipment down. So I just click on off, lower right, and then it'll ask me to confirm, and that will shut off everything in the room. You'll notice in a tunnel, I can shut off just the zones, the north or the south, um, but I have to confirm before I shut down. And that's basically it. It would be nice if you were writing on the walls to clean that up, erase it, um, put the tables back and rearrange them so it's ready for the next group. If you have questions about the university classroom, you can contact Seth Denny in Burlington or I'm Lisa Jacobs in Atomic.